Thunder in my last video about grounded theory, you can watch it if you click here or here, I'll never remember, where uh, one of you asked me to talk more about axial coding and open coding, which is coding quite uh, typically associated with grounded theory. Uh, so here I'll explain what axial coding and open coding is, uh, how to do it, and as you'll see, it's actually pretty easy. It's, there's nothing complex about open open coding or axial coding. But firstly, one thing that I want to explain is that whilst uh, open coding and axial coding as concepts, uh, as terms originated in grounded theory, they are not necessarily exclusively connected to grounded theory studies. So there are other types of studies, uh, any kind of a case study or thematic analysis study, uh, where this sort of coding can be and usually is implemented. And if you watch uh, my content about data analysis, again, I'll link to some videos uh, that I posted before, you'll see that quite often I talk about three stages of coding. And these three stages are exactly something, the result of me being influenced by grounded theory. But again, it's something that I use in any study that I work on, not just grounded theory studies. And secondly, and it's kind of related to what I just said, Open coding and axial coding, they're not necessarily types of codes as such. Yes, they do have some characteristics, I'll cover them uh, soon, uh, but they are not necessarily a type of coding. They're just more about the stage of coding, describing stage of coding. So again, you have thematic analysis, you have, for example, Brown and Clark and their famous six stages of coding. Um, and again, these uh, axial and open coding can easily be fit into these these stages. Then they don't use the same terminology, but they are talking about exactly the same things. And uh, again, I do have a video where I explain specifically how to uh, how to fit that into Brown and Clark's uh, structure. But now let's just define and talk about these these codes. So open coding first. So open coding is the first stage. And uh, some approaches in, in constructivist grounded theory, for example, uh, they call it initial coding. So in my videos, you usually hear me talking about initial coding, but it's exactly the same thing, open coding. So open coding is just the initial stage of coding. It's really exploratory and data driven. So what that means is that as you're reading the data, I often talk about uh, the codes being uh, self-explanatory and being descriptive. Uh, so that's exactly what I mean here when I talk about data-driven and exploratory. You don't want to be using previous frameworks, you don't want to be using any previous preconceived ideas or imposing anything on your data. You're just reading uh, your text and you're creating, you're tagging that text with these codes. So basically assigning little notes, you can, it really helps to think of codes as little sticky notes. Uh, whether you're using software or you're, you're doing it manually, you're just assigning uh, or tagging certain segments of text with little descriptions of what that text is about. And what this means in practice is that open coding quite often is pretty detailed. So very often you'll hear, especially grounded theorists, talk about line by line coding or sentence by sentence. Again, there is no rule for that. You don't necessarily have to do it line by line or sentence by sentence, but, uh, but the point is to be pretty detailed because you're not sure yet uh, where this is all going. So you want to code most of what you are reading. This means that you're likely to generate lots of codes. It's very common to have hundreds of codes uh, after you're done with your initial stage of coding. And the example codes that we generate at this stage, so let's imagine we're doing a study of online learning. Uh, example codes that we generate at this stage could be things like uh, technical issues or uh, distractions at home or maybe lack of engagement. Uh, as well as let's come up with some positive stuff. So convenience of learning, not having to commute, uh, more engaging learning context. So of course, these are just examples if that's what you're seeing in the data as you're reading that data. Just before I continue, I wanted to remind you to explore my website for a variety of services that I offer, mostly one-to-one -one Zoom tutorials, but also services such as writing support or data analysis service, where I analyze your data and prepare a full report of the findings. But now let's get back to the topic of this video. And now axial coding, also known as focused coding. So again, focused coding is more common in constructivist grounded theory, which does not mean that you can't use this term if you're not doing a constructivist grounded theory. So axial coding or focus coding is a stage where you start to group and organize uh, these initial or open codes. So the example codes that I gave you before uh, could be grouped, uh, for example, into uh, challenges of online learning, where our lack of engagement and technical issues and distractions at home would end up, as well as advantages of online learning, so convenience of learning, not having to commute, or more engaging content. 
And what you will often hear when uh, reading about this stage of coding is that, for example, you're looking for connections between the codes. And uh, when you do, when you read this, don't worry, because I know that when you read all these things, it can be quite overwhelming. But don't worry, because what it simply means is that you're grouping them, you're, you're uh, putting them into categories. That's the connections part. So, of course, you're looking for connections because you're reading through your list of initial codes that you created. And now you're thinking, how do I organize it? How do I organize into groups? So as I see these things about technical issues or, or poor engagement, I'm thinking, I, uh, I think I should put them into this one group of challenges of online learning. So that's how I'm looking for connections. There is nothing more to it. So just so you know, it may uh, sound and feel overwhelming and, and sound like something extremely complex, but it's really not. It's just about grouping. And this stage of coding eventually leads to creating themes because as I explained in several videos, just explore my uh, data analysis playlist. I can't link to too many videos in this video. Uh, but I explained many times that this stage eventually leads to developing themes. So through that grouping and through understanding, developing this understanding of our data, eventually we become so familiar with the data that we can uh, start developing themes and deciding what themes are running through our data. And the final thing about focus coding or axial coding is the question, so is it just about organizing the codes that I have or do I actually still code? And there is uh, there are different opinions on that and it depends on what, uh, when you enter that stage. Again, something I addressed several times in my videos, it can be that you uh, use that initial or open coding for all your transcripts first. So then as a result, all you have to do is just to organize and group it uh, in your second uh, stage of Axial coding. Or you can start reading your transcripts, create uh, some uh, certain number of initial codes or open codes, then pause, go on to that second stage, organize these codes, and then continue to code your data with these slightly organized codes. That's why in some approaches, like I said, it's called focus coding because the coding becomes a little bit more focused now as you uh, continue to code the remaining data. So this is it. I hope that you enjoyed this content and learned something new. If you did, please uh, like this video to help others find it. Feel free to post questions in the comments. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing.